All right, and we are live. Welcome, everybody. We are talking today about custom doors. It's one of our best sellers. So, Matt, you want to show them what we got right here? Yeah, so we've got uh, one of our regular starboard frame, starboard door access doors, our, our build your own starboard boat doors that are right on the website. It, uh, really popular part it's on a lot of boats it, hundreds if not thousands of boats thousands of doors in the field very common very popular part that's out there so let's build one let's flip over to the website here and let's check it out so as you can see uh, we've got everything set up right here for you to be able to configure and order one of these doors on the website uh, by yourself um, the first two critical dimensions are going to be your uh, height and your width and above that you select if you're going to provide us with the outside dimension or the whole cutout dimension. So let's for right now start with the outside dimension and let's put in something just to start and then we'll talk a little bit more about those. So we'll put in 20 by 12 and of course you have this drop down here so let's do 20 and a half by 12. Mm -hmm. So in this case we're supplying the overall outside dimensions of 20 and a half by 12 and up at the top, you'll see a pop-up that uh, pops up and says, uh, these are the important dimensions. And there's three important dimensions. They are the outside, the cutout, and the pass-through. So Matt, you want to talk a little bit about what those are, what, what each of them uh, yeah, are and sure. are important? So looking at the door here zoomed in, this is, uh, this is what we refer to as the outside dimension. It's going to be all the way around the door, the outside of the frame. So it's the dimension that it's going to sit on the fiberglass, right? Absolutely. On the outside. Yes. Okay. So to, to show you guys the cutout dimension, I'm going to flip the door over here. These are the returns that are screwed onto the back of the door. This is what we put the seal into. But the returns are what go into the hole of, that you cut in the boat. This is what we refer to as the cutout. It's the portion of the returns that'll slide into the hole of the boat. The and pass is a hole that, need, that needs to be cut in the fiberglass, right? So if exactly. You, in, if you were uh, matching this door to an existing hole, it probably is easier to, instead of specifying the overall outside, to just specify the cutout. Right. Yeah, OK. Cool. Right. So to show you guys what we refer to as the pass, or I'll flip the door over so you can see it from the way you would normally have the door installed. And you can see the pass-through dimension we refer to is going to be the inside of the returns, the actual available space that you have to put an item through the opening in the door. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is the pass-through dimensions that you see here do not factor in the catch plate that you see right here. And this catch plate sticks out about a half an inch. So talk to me about where, um, it seems to me intuitively that the outside dimension and the cutout dimension are the most critical. And the, you know, they're the ones that we're able to accept, right? You can give us the right. outside or you can give us the, the cutout and we'll make mm -hmm. it work. What are some examples about where pass-through dimension might be critical and something you want to really think about? So maybe you have an access door in the back of your leaning post, your fiberglass leaning post, and you know you want to put a tackle box in there, and your tackle box is 12 inches wide, mm -hmm. right? If, if you're looking to put that tackle box through there, you're going to need to know the actual open space that's going to be available in that door so that you can make sure it fits when you go to put it in. Sure. That way you can calculate that dimension before you've ever even placed an order. Sure. So I mean, another example would be if you were doing an anchor locker door, right? You knew your anchor was a specific width. You have yeah. to be able to fit through the door, right? Or you're going you're gonna to be a little bit upset. So mm -hmm. though, here's another you know, kind of graphical representation or, or rendering of the mm -hmm. three critical dimensions, of course, outside, cutout, and pass-through. So you can look here, we've supplied the overall outside dimension of 20 and a half by 12, and it's told us that, OK, the cutout dimension that it matches uh, is 18.75 by 10 and a quarter, and then that'll result in the pass-through that's 16.625 by 8.125. So it's important as you're putting in these first main dimensions that you're looking at those three, and if any of them you're particularly sensitive to or particularly matter to you, uh, that uh, you know, you're, you're you can taking that into consideration. And you have it right there in front of you to calculate everything that you need. Cool. So once you feel good about the dimensions, you move on to color. So we've got a variety of different colors. And if you scroll down here, there is a color section of the website. And you can click on, and you can see uh, you know, a representation of these different colors. Now, I mm -hmm. want to talk about this a little bit, because this is definitely valuable in so much that you, know, you can look at this and go, OK, I see that white white is brighter than seafoam, brighter than fish white. You know, it is a little bit brighter than Arctic white. But uh, you know, monitors are, are tricky, right? You can change the monitor settings to be darker. You can make it uh, different for gaming or watching you know, television, right? So it's all different. And it looks different on one monitor versus uh, you know, another monitor. So really, this can be used uh, for uh, referencing relative 
uh, differences in color. White white's brighter than Arctic white, but it's not necessarily representative of the color of Arctic white or sea foam. And for that, what I really recommend is a sample chain. And we sell those sample chains for, uh, they're $10, right? $10? I think we sell them for $10 on the website. That includes That's delivery. free shipping. Yeah, free shipping. Yeah. So we're trying to sell them at cost. In fact, I guarantee you that, that this ends up costing us a little bit more than $10 to produce and ship to you. But you can see they come and you've got all the different color options milled with the different, uh, of course, color that that is. And right. we recommend doing this if you're particularly sensitive to, to you know, the colors matching. You'd be surprised at how bad two different whites can look when installed on a boat. So that's always an option that I would encourage people to, uh, to do. So in this case, I would say white white is the brightest and the most popular, so we'll move forward with that. Uh, then you'll need to select the hinge direction. And you can see it can either hinge on the height or it can hinge on the width, and it can either hinge left, right, down, or up. Um, you know, if in, ca you know, in case that's confusing, we have these graphical or, or these uh, rendering examples of you know how it would hinge. Uh, but let's just go with the height, right? This is a chance to talk a little bit about generally wanting to hinge on the longer dimension. You want to kind of yeah. pitch that a little bit? So a lot of times what you see, you can see here, this door hinges on the long dimension. Now, the orientation of this, this could be your height or it could be your width. It depends on how you're mounting your door. But the key is it is on the long dimension. The critical time where it's absolute, it's, it's really important that you are hinging on the long dimension is when it's on your height. Because what can happen is if your door is wider than it is tall, what's gonna happen is the door is gonna sag inside the frame and the bottom of the door right here will actually hit the frame when you're trying to close it. Sometimes you get some clearance issues within the reveal here. So what we- So real quick, you're saying if, if you were trying to do something like this, like let's mm -hmm. say maybe even this door was a bit wider than this, right. and you tried to hinge on this side right here, right. That, that the weight of the starboard's gonna make this wanna kinda sag on this long hinge. Correct, correct. Right. Versus if, if it was kinda like this and hinging down, all the weight's sitting down against this hinge, so it might not be as much of an issue. Right. Um, the trouble that you get is you get a shorter hinge than the actual length of the door. So you have, you have less to hold the door, a lot more leverage on the hinge, and these are plastic doors. Plastic will give a little bit when it's put under a load. Understood. Okay, so in this case, we said we're going to go ahead and hinge on height, which conveniently is the longer dimension, so we're good to go there. And then we're talking about latch type. So we've got uh, plastic or stainless uh, latches, and on the plastic side, we can either go white or black. Now, there is a little bit of a surcharge when you start going into the stainless options or the locking options. In fact, here you can see the different latch types. Um, of course, the one we're looking at here right. is a stainless latch. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on plastic versus stainless? Honestly, uh, plastic is great if you want everything to be one color. But as you can see, we have white or black. So if you're looking for Arctic white or you know, fish white, something along those lines, it might be a little bit more challenging, or gray. Now stainless might be a little bit closer there. But as far as durability, stainless is the way to go. Yeah. Um, I prefer the stainless latches. latches. What, three, four years? You know, I've seen them go longer than that, yeah. but I've seen them break more frequently. Sure. So it, my personal preference, the stainless looks nicer, it lasts longer, It. It just holds up better. If it, it, I would I would say it feels more professional. It does. You look at it and you're like, okay, this is a proper door. That's right? yeah. Somebody wasn't trying to cheap out on something. Sure. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's do stainless steel. Let's say non-locking. Maybe locking's not critical. Right. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is bulb seal, and let's talk about this one for a while because this is one that I almost wish we would take off and make everything required to have bulb seal. Right. Let's switch back <laughs> over at the zoom, and Matt, you want to talk about what the bulb seal is? Sure. So when you guys saw the door open, I'll show you here. The seal actually gets pressed into the returns into what we we mill a T slot in here. This seal is not adhesive; it is pressed into a groove that you can't see behind the seal. The nice thing about this seal, it is a nice thick rubber seal, and you can hear when I close this, it doesn't it doesn't sound like like plastic hitting plastic, it's much nicer. Uh, it's not perfect, these doors are not waterproof, but it does help to keep some water out. The main thing that it does is it helps to reduce rattle. You don't get any rattle when the door's shaken. Yeah, when you're running the boat, right? You don't have your door smacking against your return going. Right. Do, 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 do. Now, what it what it also does is these catches on these doors are slotted where the uh, where the screws are attached, so you can adjust your catch plate if, for some reason, it loosens up over time and your door starts to do something like this. And I left it loose so I could demonstrate it. But uh, you can open the door up and 
pull this tight. Drop so, down a little bit. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm a little off camera. You can slide this tighter. Uh, you know, tighter is going to be towards the inside of the opening, and then you can move this up, and you see you don't get that anymore. It doesn't rattle. Gotcha. So you have some adjustability in the catch location to be able to hold it tight against that seal. Against that seal, exactly. So yeah, I think um, in addition to in addition to the the rattle, I think it. Going back to the stainless, it just feels a lot more professional. When it I open, feel like it was built in a garage. Right. right. When I open this up and I see that there's a seal in here, someone took their time to to really make a nice, good, high quality door. And the fact that it's not adhesive means it lasts a long time. I don't I don't hear about issues with our seal ever because it is no. like you say pressed in. You know, it's in there very. Uh, you, yeah, I can't pull this out if I wanted to. It would actually break off the off the uh, the channel that's in the T slot before it came out. All right. So let's move on. So we will add seal, which adds $25. The last is louvers. And we don't have a door sitting here with louvers, but I have a picture and I want to talk about what louvers are. So louvers are actually slots that are milled. It's actually milled uh, offset, one from the front and then one from the back side of the door so that it's stepped up a little bit. And the purpose is to allow air to flow through, it, but to minimize the amount of water that can actually blow blow through. Right, right. And so what's the what's the, the theory behind why you would want louvers? So I mean louvers will allow air to pass through so you see it a lot more commonly on you know, areas where the inside of the hatch might have something wet in it. You know, maybe sure. on the back of your console if you're throwing wet life jackets in there or on your anchor locker door when you just throw all your wet anchor rope inside there. Uh, that's going to allow some air to pass through and allow whatever's in there to dry a little bit quicker and not you know, hold that wet air inside the hatch. Um, we do see from time to time um, a, a lot of the argument is, well, if, you're, if you have louvers on there, you don't need seal because you're not really trying to keep water out. You're going to get more water in through louvers than you will if you don't have them anyway. Yeah, and that, that's a good one because when I'm talking to customers, I will really try to convince them to do seal. I think for $25, that's a lot of value. And I'm I, right there with you. I would probably push for someone to do a stainless steel latch. I think for the $22, that brings a lot of value and durability. <clears throat> Louvers are much more of a personal opinion, right? Okay, yes, you do enable some airflow, mm -hmm. but you also enable a little bit of water to, to get through, certainly right. if you're washing down the boat, right? Yeah. And it's not going to stop if you're spraying in there from getting water. So louvers are kind of, you can take them or leave them, right? But they're available. Mm -hmm. And what's the upcharge for louvers currently? Uh, 25 I think. $25. So mm -hmm. let's say no louvers, right? So we've just built this custom door to the dimensions that we know we need for, uh, you know, for our outside dimensions. Uh, we've selected the color, the hinge direction. We've uh, upgraded the latch to a non-locking stainless latch. We've added bulb seal, and we're good to go. We've got a price right on the website. So how long does this normally take uh, to ship for you? So from the time you place an order, it'll take about three to five business days before it ships out from our facility. And I think nine out of 10 times, we're hitting the three side of that. Generally, it'll get engineered the next day. Like mm -hmm. if you place an order right now, generally, it'll get engineered the next business day, I should say. Yes. The next business mm -hmm. day. Uh, cut that night, mm -hmm. uh, be built that next day, and hopefully ship that next day. So normally we're at two to, th to three days. So we're normally on the, the faster side of that. We try to be on the quicker side for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, the last thing I want to say is just because we made it so easy to do it yourself, that doesn't mean that we don't want to talk to you. If you have any questions at all, if you want to pick our brain about this door style or that door style, you know, we are here from uh, 8 to 5, ready to chat about any, this or any other project that you have. Think of anything else we need to talk about? That's what that's that's build your own doors. Awesome. Thanks and have a great day.